On this occasion, we've got two speakers, two noted libertarian activists. On my left, um, geographically, is um, Gary Denoyan, the um, chairman of the Nassau County Libertarian Party and uh, member of the um, um, committee at large as well, the New York Libertarian Party's committee at large. Um, on my right is Dr. Tom Stevens, who is also a member of the uh, committee at large for Queens County, um, and uh, prior to that served as a uh, member for, the, um, for Manhattan County Libertarian Party. The um, issue that's uh, going to be debated tonight is the following resolution. Resolved, the New York Libertarian Party should cross endorse William Weld for governor in 2006 if he is the Republican nominee, rather than endorsing an independent Libertarian candidate. Dr. Stevens will be speaking in the affirmative. Gary Denoyan will speak in the negative. And the format of the debate is this. Um, Dr. Stevens will start out with a, um, with a constructive speech not to exceed five minutes. Mr. Denoyan will then reply with um, a negative constructive speech not to exceed five minutes. At that point, um, we will open the floor to questions. Anybody who wants to may ask a question of either or both parties who will each then have one minute to answer. At the end of the question and answer session, um, each party will give a uh, three minute concluding speech. There will be no vote as to which side to endorse or as to which side won the debate. This is strictly for enlightenment and entertainment and to uh, give us something to chew on. All that having been said, I give you um, Dr. Tom Stevens, Dr. Gary Denoyan. Dr. Stevens, you're up. Thank you. The Libertarian Party is a corporation that has for 30 years failed to obtain the 50,000 votes in the gubernatorial election needed to obtain official party status in the state of New York. Obtaining this goal would give us a permanent line on the ballot for four years, and our petition signature requirements would be significantly reduced to just 5% of the registered Libertarians that were present in any particular district. Our last gubernatorial candidate obtained less than 6,000 votes, and there is no evidence that the base of support for our party is growing. In New York, we have the unique opportunity to give the Libertarian Party nod to an individual who may also be nominated by another political party. This is not where we endorse merely the Republican or the Democrat, but where we actually give the Libertarian Party nomination to an individual who may be also nominated by another political party. If we do that this year by endorsing William Weld, we will have an opportunity to increase the profile of our party, obtain many more votes than we obtained in past gubernatorial elections, and give us a real possibility of obtaining 50,000 votes that we need and we would do so by overcoming the wasted vote syndrome. In other words, libertarian Republicans in the state of New York will be able to vote for William Weld on our party line without sacrificing their opposition to Elliot Spitzer or whoever else may be the Democratic nominee. In Weld, we have someone who describes himself, himself as a libertarian. At a recent rally in Buffalo, he gave a shout out to a French anarchist who said that taxation is theft. And he spoke approvingly of the philosopher Lewis Hartz, who wrote in The Essence of Democracy that the individual shall not be thrust in the corner. Well said, that's always resonated with me and I think came to describe my politics. It's always been about maximizing individual freedom. If we fail to obtain the 50,000 votes, we will have raised the profile of our party as well as gained respect for having attracted an individual such as William Well to be our nominee. If we obtain the 50,000 votes, then the challenge will be on over the next four years. Based upon the Green Party example, when they ran Grandpa Al Lewis for governor, we can expect between 30 to 40,000 new registered libertarians entering our party immediately after our obtaining major party status. 
We will then have the challenge in, those next, in that next year to organize 62 county organizations to run people, and which we easily can do in each of the districts by getting just 5% of the registered libertarians on a petition, and to spread the message and build our organizational support so that four years from now we can run a gubernatorial candidate in our own right. I support giving William Weld our LP nomination under certain very strict conditions, which I've made clear to the state committee. One, that he is the nominee of the Republican Party. Two, that he agrees to pay for all our petition expenses. Three, that he agree to place the Libertarian Party name in his literature and in all media advertisements. In other words, William Weld, Republican Libertarian. And finally, that he agree that he will allow us to run the party without his interference should we obtain major party status. The choice is clear. We can either continue down the same path of being a party where the L stands for loser, 30 years of being a loser, never gaining major party status, never being a political organization, or taking a chance in endorsing William Well that might, just might, thrust us onto the political playing field and give us an opportunity to get out the Libertarian Party message for the next four years and hopefully a long time after that. Thank you. Well, I'd like to um, start by, by thanking um, the Manhattan Libertarian Party and its chair, Joseph Dobrin, for this opportunity. I think, uh, uh, you know, I, it's, it's not easy sometimes to recognize the, um, the issues or the, uh, uh, the, the how the minutiae of, of New York election law will affect the development of the Libertarian Party as a whole. I mean, we, 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 we don't really see the uh, importance of the, uh, uh, of, the, of the system of law and election that we're in and without uh, the opportunity to, to, um, to, discuss, to discuss it at events like this and on the, uh, the internet with Gary Popkin's program, I, don't, I, I think uh, a lot of people would not really have that, that opportunity. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Stevens for uh, agreeing to this debate. I, you know, I think this is something that uh, really transcends anything else that may be going on within the party. The, the opportunity to really communicate this to others really shows uh, that we, I think that we, we all have the best interest of the party in mind. Um, I, I do think it's important, though, that people understand a, a little bit about the situation we're in, as I see it, as far as the uh, uh, the, uh, the system of laws and the, the whole the whole the uh, sociological background behind the, uh, uh, the 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 reasons I should say that the Libertarian Party is kind of struggling to get its party status. As Dr. Stevens pointed out, we, we have a plurality take-all system here, which leads, leads to the wasted vote syndrome, the idea that uh, people are uh, discouraged from voting for anyone other than the major two parties. I think that's a normal uh, reaction when, when you have a plurality takes-all, uh, as opposed to other systems where we may have, where there may be proportional va uh, balloting or instant runoff uh, vo uh, voting. That's something that we do need to we, need, we do need to deal with, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a fact of life for, for this party. Uh, to the extent we want to change that, that may be, but we also should work, to, you know, we should work within the system as it exists. In New York State, we have uh, additional strange quirks of, of election law that affect uh, uh, the, the growth of the Libertarian Party and minor parties in general. One is the requirement that uh, a party, in order to be recognized, achieve 50,000 votes for its gubernatorial candidate uh, in perpetuity. Even if it does that at one point, it'll have to keep doing that forever. And obviously, for the, for the two major parties, which uh, automatically attract uh, the, the bulk of the interest, that requirement is not a problem at all. The problem really, uh, really strikes much, much greater at the third parties, which uh, don't have a tendency to, to uh, be able to keep that status for more than two or three uh, elections in a row. Uh, another quirk of New York State law is the idea of cross-endorsement, where um, minor parties can, uh, well, or, where candidates, I should say, uh, can accept the nominations of more than one party. Uh, and that, I that goes even for the all-important gubernatorial race. Now, that's, that issue really has affected uh, the, uh, the kind of political parties we have in the state. What, what I suggest is that we can, we, we can um, categorize them into two different types. We have the uh, independent parties, whose candidates obtain st status or, or whose gubernatorial candidates obtain 50,000 votes independently. So, uh, of course, we have the major parties. 
right now uh, for the past three elections in a row. We've had the Independence Party who's done that as well with, with Tom Golisano. And then, uh, then we have in the state what I would term the parasite parties, those parties who, uh, who only obtain ballot status by means of cross-endorsing one of the major party candidates. The examples currently are the uh, Conservative Party, who have consistently for the past three elections used the uh, Republican nominee, and the Working Families Party, who, who have been using the Democratic nominee in order to get their ballot status, who replaced in uh, 2002 the Liberal Party, who had been the previous parasite party of the Democrats. Uh, other than those two categories, those parties that don't ob obtain ballot status are called independent bodies in this state, and that's the condition that we find ourselves now, and we have always found ourselves in this state, uh, the Libertarian Party. The Green Party is, is back in that status now as well, uh, as well as every other party that doesn't receive 50,000 votes for its, uh, for its candidate. Um, historically and logically, there has really only been room for one parasite party for each of the major parties. Uh, in the last three or four elections, that has been the case. Uh, the Republican Party, okay, the Republican Party has, has, uh, has hosted the, the Conservative Party, and the Democratic Party has hosted one party. What we're faced with now is a situation where the proposal is that uh, one candidate will be hosting not just two, and uh, perhaps even three or four parties. This is unprecedented in the history of New York uh, politics, and in fact, okay, thank you. Hearing our uh, go to floor open to questions, uh, please do not make statements, but ask questions. Sam, I saw your hand first. Okay. I, I'm, I'm very, very much impressed by Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tom Stevenson's uh, presentation. He's almost got me convinced, but there's one real serious problem that I have with this. That is, take an example of the Independence Party. They started off as a right-wing party by H. Ross Perot. Then Galassano got in in the primary, then he moved towards the middle. Now the Communist Party, uh, Mar uh, it was Leone Falani has taken Have over. Have you got something that ends with a question mark, Sam? Yes, uh, it, it does. I do, please. Give me a moment, please. Now you have a, a Marxist who, who is a, right, uh, who's a, a rabid uh, racist who has taken over the party named Falani. Now, now they're trying to kick her out. Now, how... Uh, how, how are you going to stop that from happening to the Libertarian Party? Well, I'll tell you. Once we gain major party status, our internal affairs would be dictated by state law, which, which means that on every county level, it is true that the registered libertarians, not even party members, but registered libertarians will have the right to elect their district leaders and to decide uh, what will take place. Now, the... the uh, Certain of the parties that have gained status, one way to control that, and I don't know that we'd want to do this, is to grant all nomination power to the state committee. Uh, obviously, we are a party that allows local groups to do that, and you really can't stop it, because what happened in Suffolk with one of the smaller parties, the Working Families parties, is they were controlled by the Republicans, I believe, and started to cross-endorse the Republicans. So on a local level, we really can't control that. On a state level, we might be able to pass bylaws to allow nominations to go through that. But the end result is that that is the challenge. I mean, I am confident that if there were 40 new people here, that I would embrace them, reach out to them, exchange my card, communicate with them through email. It would be a great challenge for all of the leaders, yourself included, to go to those 62 counties to embrace these new people and show them your experience in the party, our experience in the party. We have attorneys here, Mark Axon, Gary Denoyan, Joseph Dobrian. We should be able to incorporate those people and prevent the takeover, and we could also put bylaw restrictions in place. Uh, that's a very good point, Sam. That's actually uh, uh, something that has, has led me to uh, uh, kind of change my direction of, of, of activism in the party. My first involvement in, in the state party was as political director. And my goal, really, my primary goal, if I could say that, was to develop the local organizations. Now, I, I noticed a, a certain resistance to that idea. In fact, I think uh, Dr. Stevens himself suggested that rather than organizing local parties, we should be focusing our, our efforts instead on finding a gubernatorial candidate that will get 50,000 votes. My, my argument that those two things were not contradictory didn't seem to, to, to matter. The fact is you're right. The status of getting uh, 50,000 votes uh, in itself as an independent party will be an indication of strength that would resist this kind of thing. But if you're getting it as, an, as a parasite party, uh, just kind of tailing on to a, a, a gubernatorial candidate, absolutely, there's a very big risk that, uh, that non-libertarians would, would end up being uh, in control of the party. Nick? I have a question for Gary Dedoyan. Sure. Gary, um, 
I'm kind of uh, very worried that over the next two election cycles, uh, the NYLP is not going to be able to, uh, to accomplish anything. I mean, in the, in the past uh, 10 years, what have we accomplished here in New York State? Not a lot in terms of elections. So um, I want to have some hope that we're going to make some, that we're actually going to get to 50,000 votes and make any impact at all. And if we don't adopt Tom's proposal, I mean, what hope do we have that we're going to make any progress? All right, that's a very good question as well. I mean, that, you know, that is something that really, uh, uh, I, I think, has affected this organization and, and the people in it a lot longer than, than I've been involved myself. I mean, it, it took me some time to understand just how frustrated a lot of the leadership and the membership have been in, in New York in particular with, with this situation. Uh, the fact is, uh, you know, I, I don't have the benefit of the long-term view, but it does, it does strike me pretty clearly that this holy grail of 50,000 votes by becoming a parasite party has, uh, has kind of affected the mindset of the party. I, I, it seems to me, and there's no real way to prove it other than by actually giving it a shot, that if, if not for that distraction, there would be a lot more effort put into the party uh, at, the, uh, at the leadership level and at the local level in doing what's necessary at the grassroots level to build up the parties, you know, step by step, bit by bit. It's hard, it's hard work. It's, it's difficult when we don't have the party status. What I'm suggesting is doing it in, in a different order from what Tom Stevens is doing it. But I think in the long run, the order that I'm talking about, doing the hard work first and then getting the party status, is really the only logical way to become uh, the third largest party in the state and eventually, be, you know, hopefully break into the majors. I, I don't oppose, I mean, theoretically, uh, building up the local organizations, but the truth is uh, that the local, we have six or seven active groups, if that, in the entire state of New York out of 62 counties. And in the past, we have not been able to attract people who come to meetings and stay or be active. Why should they? They can't easily run for office, uh, except for Manhattan. This is the best group in the entire state. But I mean, in terms of attracting people or people to get on the street to, 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 to uh, petition for us, it's extremely difficult. So I do not believe that we can build up the local organizations until we have that influx of new people. And I think that the last 30 years with, with uh, even this Manhattan group dying and then being reborn, I think we have the evidence that, that why should somebody be active? Why would we attract them? And will we have any prospect over the next two election cycles of getting the 50,000 votes on our own? And I think the answer is no, not without taking a step like this. Uh, Mark, I'm sorry. Thank you. I have a question for Dr. Stevens, following up to some degree from Sam's point. Should we be reaching out to someone who has a few libertarian points, claims he's a libertarian, but what we'll end up doing is bringing in 30 or 40,000 people to take us over, use our name, use our line, but not necessarily promote freedom as we would want? These 30 or 40,000 people are not a monolith. There are people of different backgrounds, and we need to organize them. Howard Stern nomination, I'm going to take the step and, and, and take the risk of, uh, of, of, of offending people, but I think it was a great move. And had Howard Stern been on our ballot that November, we would have had our 50,000 votes. And when pe I talk to people on the street about the Libertarian Party, they still remember Howard Stern in a positive light. The reason that became a problem is because the people in this party who, did, who wanted a pure Libertarian to run uh, sat on their hands and didn't get the petition signatures required. And from what I heard, we were like uh, the last weekend where the, he wasn't going to get on the ballot. And that may or may not be true, but this is what I heard from the person in charge of the petition drive. And so to avoid embarrassment, he stepped out. I know the public story was he didn't want to financial disclose what he made, but uh, I hear that that was not true. He was facing an embarrassment where he wouldn't have got on the ballot. And even those Howard Stern people who came to the convention and joined at the last minute, they didn't seek to take over the party at that convention. They were there. And I think that we can control the situation. And I think it's time to go just for the gubernatorial nod for someone like Grandpa Al Lewis. I actually contacted Joyce Randolph for the honeymooners to ask her if she would run, and she declined. So, I mean, somebody who has celebrity status, somebody who can get recognition for us, and I think it would be good for us. If I could also, yes, just one last point. Uh, I have nothing against a celebrity candidacy. I, I, in fact, I think uh, given the, the bizarre nature of the New York rules, I think that's kind of the, the really the only way for a party to break into the majors, either either celebrity such as Al Lewis 
or money, such as Tom Golisano. I mean, th those seem to have both been very effective for, for those parties, at least temporarily. Obviously, in order to, to build on that, in order to grow, there has to, be a, there has to be some there there. There has to be a party that really does have ambitions of, of, of taking that and, and running with it. Uh, as far as, as, as uh, Howard Stern, yes, I would agree that that, would, uh, that, was a, that was a good idea. It was my understanding, though, that, that his problem was some contractual problem with regard to the money, be that as it may. Uh, one quick statistic I'd just like to throw out. In the last four gubernatorial elections, the number of votes for, for, no, for non-major party candidates is astounding when you look at the numbers. In 1990, there was over a million people who voted for other than the two major candidates. In 94, over 300,000. In 98, over half a million. And in 2002, 782,000. Now, the problem for the Libertarian Party is that almost all of those go to the the third largest candidate. Uh, you know, we have uh, uh, the, the last three, of course, is Tom Golisano got uh, 72, 61, 83 percent of that third party vote. And pr prior to that was the Conservative Party with Al London getting 80 percent. So there's a lot of, a, lo a lot of, uh, okay, a, a lot of interest in there in, in third party votes. Thomas? Yeah. You, you mentioned the, the phrase of parasite party and, and you're taking two examples of <coughs> parties that got the ballot status. Conservative Party and Liberal Party. The Conservative Party says that they, they gave up their principles and the Liberal Party is no longer an official party in, uh, in New York. What lessons do you take from the Conservative Party and the Liberal Party, their experiences gaining ballot, ballot access? I have to say, it all depends on how we use the party. Um, I'm not opposed to going over to a Democrat or a Republican just like the Liberals and the Conservatives did and say, listen, We'll cross and Dorsey for assembly. Here's a list of 25 issues that we care about. If you promise to introduce or select from this list three issues that you care about, and we'll cross and Dorsey you, and you promise in the next two years to introduce a bill that would uh, have a debate about this issue in the assembly. I have no problems with that. While, so I, I would have a mixture of candidates running on libertarian issues that are pure libertarian candidates, or at least candidates that are going to focus on libertarian issues. And I would do, if I were state chairman at the time, uh, I would find very carefully selected races to cross endorse people who were somewhat libertarian and ask them to introduce bills on issues that matter to us. So I would do a lot of what the Liberal and Conservative Party does, but I'd also make sure that our organizational structure was strong enough so that we could run candidates for statewide office on our own. Your question... Thomas, really, what? Um, lessons from the Conservative Party and Liberal Party. One that s says they, they gave up the principles, and the other is no longer uh, an official party. Well, all I, all I would say, you know, of, of course, you know, I, I agree that uh, just by the term parasite, you can, you can tell that I'm not really enamored of that idea. Obviously, there has to be some kind of quid pro quo when a party makes this kind of deal with a major party. Uh, and and uh, as we can see down the line, the Conservative Party does tend to cross endorse Republicans. Uh, and, and working family, the, the, the Democrats. But what I'll also point out is the, uh, the Liberal Party, the example you gave. Uh, they, when, when they picked the, the wrong horse among the Democrats, what happened to them? They, they've really c collapsed and they've gone out of existence. I mean, I think uh, that is the risk, the idea that we could first start as a parasite party and then later on develop our own independent separate candidacy. I think, you know, once, once we've tasted this, this, uh, this tempting elixir, it's going to be very, very tough to overcome the temptation to continue, continue in eternity, if we can, cross-endorsing the Republican, and, and this party will have lost its independence existence. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Okay. Um, seeing no more questions, uh, I'll uh, call on the two debaters to uh, give their closing statements. You each have three minutes, rigidly timed. Uh, Dr. Stevens. We are ready for major party status, and this is our year, <laughs> period. I mean, that's the bottom line. I'm tired of being a loser party. I'm tired of nobody hearing our message. I'm tired of everyone applauding 0.3%, 0.4%. It's time that we get onto the major political playing field and that we make a difference. We might not make it this year, but at least to have a gubernatorial candidate who's speaking and who calls himself a libertarian, who says that taxation is theft, who believes in maximizing individual li liberty as his major principle, I think we could take the shot in cross-endorsing Weld under the specified conditions that I stated. I'm going to finish in, uh, my speech today by quoting uh, Richard Cooper, the predecessor 
of uh, Gary Denoyan as the chair of the Nassau County LP. In a recent email to post it to the LPNY committee list, he said the following, I suppose it's easy for armchair strategists who haven't put candidates on the ballot to recommend going it alone. If libertarians are to get these principles out there, out of their armchairs and internet bull sessions and into the real world, they have to influence the real political system. Libertarians' numbers are small. New York's uncommon cross-endorsement sets up the opportunity to make the most of our small numbers. And I think that reaching just under 6,000 in the last gubernatorial race it's embarrassing. We're not even a registered libertarian. We're a nonprofit corporation that has to file independent nominating petitions every year, not even mm -hmm. under the libertarian name. It's time to make a difference. It's time to try to go for that gold ring. Thank you. Well, I'd like to conclude by al uh, alluding to um, my response to Mr. Cooper. On, on that committee list by which we communicate with one another, which, which addressed the, the issue of, uh, uh, of uh, what, you know, what this party really, what this party really means and what, wh where we should be, uh, where we should stand with regard to the, uh, the gubernatorial race. It, it's, it strikes me that uh, uh, this, th this party really has not had an opportunity to, to make a difference this year. This, this, the, the the signs were all there to really run a very strong independent race, and it's really a shame, to, uh, in a sense, that it's not being done this year. Uh, by the same token, I, I see you know, the, the people who have been involved with this party for many years have this level of frustration with regard to our, 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 our status. And uh, under all of the circumstances, as I said to the committee, even with this debate coming up, I have to say that long ago I, I realized that it, it's necessary for the development of this party to nominate well. If, if that is a possibility that it will that it will go ahead. I'm you know I, I argue against it on principal grounds, but frankly, if it doesn't happen this year, the level of frustration will be even higher. Seems to me that it's quite clear that uh, if we do if we do cross endorse Weld, that we will not get the fifty thousand. But at that point, the, the party will then be able to mature and grow and realize the mistakes it has made in this in this level. That that growth at the local level on the grassroots level will have to happen one way or the other. There's no, there's no shortcuts to that. There's no avoiding that. So. Although this is my position in, the, in this debate, I'd, I'd like to make clear that uh, for the sake of this party, the Weld nomination, I think, will have to happen, uh, sadly but true. And uh, I just hope that uh, we, we, you know, that if, as I expect, we don't get our party status, not that I'm going to op oppose it, but that since that is what I expect, I just hope that we learn the correct lessons from that result. Thank you. Gentlemen, as is usual, when two libertarians debate in uh, one of our meetings, you have left me feeling like Billy Martin, going very strongly both ways. And uh, I want to thank you both for a wonderfully entertaining debate, and thank you for sharing your ideas, and I'm still undecided. Thank you. Thanks a lot.